The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. The actual single track is about 30 miles, a lot more than most of the parks in Texas have. It's been in the family since 1888 when my grandfather bought the first section. Kind of a dance. We built so many towers together, we very seldom even speak while we're constructing. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. This is the uh, hangar where I do all of my car projects. This is a 73 Carmen Ghia convertible. And there's the motor. <laughs> this is an 82 DeLorean. I'm John Talley, a European auto technician. When I first moved out here, they really needed people to work on Volkswagens. And it's kept me really, really busy for 40 years. <laughs> so this is how I spend some of my days. <laughs> I moved out here in 78. We're just really, really lucky that out here we've got this heaven right outside of town. There's not much that I suspect John Tally can't do. I've only been here a couple years, but from what I understand, John's been here from the very beginning. A lot of the places are growing up and getting uh, urbanized. I enjoy being out here all by myself, but I'm always amazed how many people in town don't know this piece of heaven is right here. We're off the beaten path in Texas. I think we're the biggest city that doesn't have an interstate running through it get some of the hills from the hill country. We get some of the desert stuff from the Chihuahuan Desert Plateau. You're out here and you feel like you're in the wilderness, but we're literally a few miles from town. In five or 10 minutes, they can be here and enjoy it. They're riding a bicycle or boating or hiking or whatever. Pretty much just wake up each day and decide if I'm gonna go out and ride the bike or work on somebody's car or I'm gonna get on a tractor and mow the trails. I take care of the trails at the San Angelo State Park. This is the area that we call Little Foot Draw because some I call it a dinosaur, came walking through here at some point in time and left these footprints preserved in this creek bed. That's pretty amazing right there. These have been here for many, 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 many years before man was even considered. This is a place where you can just stop and think. see them along this ridge over here. It's kind of like getting a picture of the Old West. <laughs> People from out of town come to see the bison and our longhorn. Now, this is part of the official Texas state herd. This is one of my favorite things to come out here and I really feel like I'm in another time sequence. 
I think it's the variety of activities that you can do out here. Pretty close to 8,000 acres. And I tell my volunteers this all the time, I can't run this park without you. Tractors and the lawnmowers. Sometimes they'd break down in the middle of the park and I'd go out and get them running again. And do minor repairs on the Coke machines. And now we have a new firewood vending machine. So I keep all of that going. He's like a renaissance man. Sometimes it's helping us diagnose a mechanical problem, sometimes mowing the trails. Um, but when I first got here, John invited me to one of his gigs, and I was like, you're a musician? And that's when I really knew that John can probably do just about anything. He was playing, you know, tickling the keys on the piano. I really enjoyed it. And then he started singing, and I was like, oh my gosh, he can sing too. He can tune pianos, he can play pianos, he can uh, fix cars, he goes kayaking, he goes biking, trail maintenance. He's very multifaceted and we all feel like he's a great human being. In a roundabout way, it was music that brought me here. In 1990, Angelo State University hired me to work in a musical with them called Pump Boys and Dinettes. Highway 57, Pump Boys and Dinettes. Played piano, accordion. I had to sing for two hours every night. I had to learn how to tap dance in cowboy boots. So I foresaw all of this fixing to happen, and I said, I better get in shape. So I went down and bought a mountain bike. Then I met some of the local bike club people. We all rode the south end of the park, and we worked deals with the ranchers who had some of this other area, and they let us ride through their pastures as long as we kept the gates closed. There were a lot of things to see at the grand opening of San Angelo State Park. Texas Parks and Wildlife worked a deal with the Corps of Engineers and took over this land. A community and a great group of people put together a wonderful new state park. And they allowed us to keep riding and create new trails. It has an extensive trail system for both equestrians and mountain bikers, and that will set it off from all other state parks. Five miles here and five miles there, we finally have 50 or 60 miles, which is a lot. Probably I was in on making 25 to 30 miles, and one of those is named after me also. It's called the Tally Valley. <laughs> We try to keep at least a two-foot section clear because we do have a rattlesnake or two out here. Usually the only people that worry about the snakes are the second guys in line. <laughs> Mowing, that's perfect for 99% of the trail. There's a few areas that I can't get to on a tractor, and there we'll use weed eaters, rakes and hoes and stuff. After it's rained, ever so often, the Longhorn have torn up the trails. They leave deep tracks, which really jar you on a mountain bike. The trick that we've come up with was a couple of front-end loader wheels and tires. The front one digs into the trail and the rear one kind of follows it and smooths it up. And that's my dragging tool, or dragging tool. <laughs> we get countless compliments on how well they're maintained. And of course, that's all due to our volunteers. can't ever keep up with him on a bicycle, but, <laughs> but he is a very avid user. 
If you wanted to see the whole park, mountain bike is a really good way to do it. I think my favorite part about it is the solitude. It's kind of a zen deal to me to just be on the bicycle and get your heart rate up to a certain level and just keep going, but that puts your mind in a really nice place. Perfect for creating new ideas. And a lot of times when I'm out here riding along, I'll be listening to jazz or classical or whatever. It's quite entertaining to be going over some of these little ridges and stuff listening to Debussy. That's just another bit of heaven. I really enjoyed the entire park. That's my church. Maybe someday you'll find my ashes out here somewhere. <laughs> he is really, truly a resource. He's a friend. Uh, he's someone that we count on in more ways than one. I, I think John Talley's going to be out here for many years to come. <laughs> As long as I'm playing music and riding my mountain bike, I'm 19. I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. Well, the, these are family pictures of my mother and my sisters. It would have been maybe in 1910. There's one thing about it. If she says this was 1910, there's nobody else around here to dispute it. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now we're at, on the Moore Ranch. It's got wide open views of the West Texas hills and mountains. But the thing that really makes it special are the people that own and operate the ranch, and that would be Jane Crittenden and Crit Crittenden. Well, I'm 92, he's younger. <laughs> <laughs> They've been on this ranch for over 60 years, just those two working this ranch, making a living by hunting and livestock. <coughs> At the same time, put a whole bunch of time and, and effort and money back into this ranch to benefit everything. Well, it has been in the family officially since 1888, when my grandfather bought the first section. They came out here with a covered wagon and a herd of cattle. They settled for a short time at Barrel Springs, but there were too many people coming through there and they didn't like it, so they moved further on and chose this place. Now, honey, you need to be a little more honest uh, Somebody came in with a herd of sheep, and your grandfather couldn't tolerate <laughs> sheep. That's right, he didn't want his cattle drinking after sheep. <laughs> so this is called the yellow tank, and it's one of the high water sources that results from the pushing up of the water from the lower water well down there all the way up the side of this mountain. This water source is important for the mule deer, but also for the quail and the javelina and the outdad. So all the wildlife that's up high stays up here and it's drawn to it because they have a constant water source. When her grandfather came here and grandmother, much of this country was absolutely bare. Uh, there was no grass, but her father hired people with bulldozers to come out and construct these burns along the arroyas to hold up the water and give it a chance to soak in. This is blue grama coming up here, and blue grama's a high in protein. Cattle really love all the grama grasses. But his whole design with this is not to catch water, it's to slow the water down and spread it out. 
settling that soil instead of washing it down the creek and then backfilling that soil and then he gets some grass in here and that just adds to it. It's just established a grassland down here where otherwise you'd have a deep eroded canyon. It's great to see benefits from what you've done. We've been privileged to live long enough to see the benefits of not only what we did, but her father did. We like it. It's the kind of life that we want, and uh, partly, I guess, we're accustomed to it. <laughs> we just don't want to leave. <laughs> In the growing city of Lakeway, intermixed within these houses, there's a preserve of sorts called Keturah Canyon. Just watch your okay. footing. We can see the Swifts a little bit, because it, but it's a little closed in here. We'll get to see some good Swift activity at the house tonight. And here, there's a patio party about to get underway. Uh, we work hard all week, and then when we have folks out like this, this is what we do for fun. So appreciate you coming out. This is Paul. There's a mated pair. And George Ann's place. Here they'll crisscross. And these folks are here to see some chimney swifts. Their numbers are declining dramatically. Uh, they're down by probably 50, 60% since the 60s. Here in the United States and Canada, they're on the threatened and endangered list. They've lost 90% of their chimney swift population. This is now our standard chimney swift structure. For these two, the birds are more than a fleeting hobby. They've been their life's passion. Swifts need all the help they can get. They do. They are swift saviors. They're very unique, very beneficial, and they're in very serious decline, mainly because of loss of habitat. It was back in the 80s when these two met their first chimney swifts. We pretty much have dedicated our lives to the little black birds that stole our heart. We had no idea what a chimney swift was until we were presented one in a rehabilitation situation. It's two days of age, and the lady found him crawling across her carpet. We had uh, incubators and interim housing and then flight conditioning cages and whatnot. And we took care of over 1,200 baby chimney swifts over the 19 years that we did wildlife rehabilitation. There's something in your heart that makes you want to help one when you, when you see it injured or when you get a call from someone who has an injured bird. And uh, I suppose the big payoff is when you take a bird, take it outside, and open up your hands, it flies off. It's like magic. Chimney swifts are quite unique. Unable to perch or stand upright, they rely on a certain type of habitat that's disappearing rapidly. Historically, they roosted in large hollow trees, and those are not allowed to stand anymore. They then moved into brick chimneys, but now most of those are aging, and many are being capped or torn down. So we went on a journey attempting to create habitat for these birds. The habitat, their own take on a swift friendly chimney. We designed one that was relatively easy to build in kind of a kit form and has worked out very well. Okay. And these two seem to work well together too. Uh, we've been married for 40, 49 years, believe it or not. Yeah, we're a good team. Uh, George Ann really knows where to step in when I need an extra hand. Too much. Last one. It just fits together like a tongue and groove. Coming down. Coming down, great. The perfect home for chimney swifts. Nice rough, rough surface, little grooves for them to hold on to to attach their nest. Yeah, basically anybody that can use a few power tools and read a tape measure can build one of these chimney swift towers. And just one structure can make a real big difference uh, in the breeding success of the birds. I think all three of these have nest links in them. Every year we've learned something new. We figured if we could come up with something that uh, homeowners could build, then we could increase the, the habitat. And so we tried one thing, then another, different materials. And this is their final design. The outside is a hardy plank that's smooth, so no predators can climb it. The vent up there allows air to circulate through the outside of the tower, keeping it even cooler. There's babies in there. <laughs> we are so happy we were able to come up with a structure that actually 
benefits the species and that other people are really jumping on the bandwagon to help help the birds. Okay, we need to dig a little more out of this corner. Square this up a little oh, bit. Okay. That might be okay, Andy. Landowner and conservationist Andy Sansom. Can you stand her up? Is all in on Chimney Swift Towers. We're a good team. <laughs> we just keep building towers so we can get them out here. <laughs> this will be the third on his property. With each of the projects, we have become more and more involved in the actual construction. This little wire twister cuts a lot of time out. Crank it like that. Like oh. There you go. That's it. That's the idea. I feel privileged that they've increasingly trusted me enough to let me uh, participate in the project itself. Come on, man. There we go. There go. I learned a new skill today, <laughs> uh, or at least half learned. Yeah, lots more water. I think that's gonna do it. Yeah. They're halfway home. Yay. Humans helping out their feathered friends. It's worked before. People can actually be credited with the recovery and the return of bluebirds. It's not unreasonable to think that if enough chimney swift towers are built, that the chimney swift towers themselves could be just like the bluebird houses or the purple martin gourds that people put up. Uh, just a real full court press in conservation on behalf of this particular species. Okay. That's the hardest part of the tower construction there, just being on top of the ladder with that big old section up there. Paul and I have built so many towers together, we very seldom even speak while we're constructing. Kind of a dance. That's it. We're in. I'm always so glad when that's over. But now it's a piece of cake. Everything's pre-cut, ready to put up. From this point forward, it'll go pretty quick. I'll keep going up with the insulation on top of where George Ann's been. It helps. It's to keep it cooler. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Great. We've kind of lost track of how many of these we've done. We've done so many. It's over 100 and probably close to 200. I don't know that you could identify any individuals uh, who have done so much for an individual species than Paul and Georgian. And I'm talking about across the board in, in wildlife conservation. So it was really special. That's it. Okay. Done. done. We're already beginning to think about where we're going to put the next one. <laughs>
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.